Hi, this is Sean Kantayashi with Sock and Valley Cute and Cuddly Toy Schnauzers, and I have with me today Penelope. And there are a couple things that Penelope and I want to talk with you about today. You'll notice that Penelope is currently playing with our little girl Liberty and also with Reddy. I want to focus on hands for a minute. Notice how Go get it, Libby. We're, we're, going to, we're going to really focus in on what we're doing with our hands. And so one of the things that dogs don't typically like is they don't like it when people put their hands over top of the dog's head, like they're reaching over. So one of the things I really love is that you're sitting up straight. See how you're sitting up straight? Yeah. And you're not coming over the top of the dog's head while you're playing with the dog. So you're taking the toy, Liberty's bringing you the toy, and you're reaching under her mouth to get the toy. And then you're throwing it for her, and she's bringing it right back to you. So this is good. You're catching yourself because earlier you were starting to go over their heads. Did you, yeah. do you see what I mean? Yeah. And now what you're doing is you're learning. So you can grab that right out of his mouth. And you want to stay so, there you go, better even yet. You'll just say, hey, I'll let him hold that toy until he drops it in front of me. And I'll just throw another one for Liberty. Liberty loves to play fetch. Maybe. We call it get that toy here. And Liberty gets extremely excited. Liberty, get that toy. Yes. All right, I'm going to bet that there's something about that toy she does not like. The face, could, maybe? No, I bet you it's more something related to the smell. Something about it she probably doesn't it like. Smells like it's chewed or something? Well, maybe. Like I'm not sure, but here we go. We'll throw it again. Okay, so now all of a sudden maybe she's decided it's better, but she definitely likes that other one that Reddy has better. So she's asking you to throw it for her. Do you see how she's bringing yeah. it over to you and putting it in front of you like that? <laughs> So this is great. This is what it looks like to play a good game of get that toy or fetch. So now you can throw that for both. Yeah, nice. So these dogs are older than, they're not little tiny puppies. <laughs> little tiny puppies experience the world through their mouth. So they want to gnaw on or chew on things to figure it out. You're doing a great job. You can just pull it right away from her now. Yeah. <laughs> you got a good Go get it. Yes. Nicely done, Penelope. You're doing a great job in playing fetch. <laughs> Teaching your children how to play fetch or how to play get that toy, whatever you want to call it, is important both for your child and for your puppy because we don't want to get ourselves in a situation where someone is feeling like the puppy was aggressive or the puppy was biting as if it was an inappropriate thing. So this is the state that we want to get to, but how do we take a 10 week old puppy and develop it so that we get to this place okay. where it's not gnawing on you or biting you and that you can trust it with your children or your grandchildren. That's what we're going to explore. Ready? Get that toy. Yes. Yes. When they get the toy, say yes. Okay. Yes is a reward to them, just like getting a treat. Yes feels to them like getting a, a wonderful treat. Nicely done, Penelope. Yes. I was saying that puppies understand the world around them through the smell of something and also through their mouth. So it doesn't mean that you have an aggressive dog if it's holding on to a toy. See how Reddy and Liberty are currently holding on to the same toy and they're, neither one of them are letting it go right now? That, that doesn't mean that either one of them are aggressive. And Penelope did a great thing there by encouraging them to play with multiple toys rather than mm, struggling over who was going to get the toy. And Liberty is looking at Penelope here, having eye, eye contact with her and saying, throw the toy for me, throw the toy for me. 
you're catching it really nicely when you're starting to put your hand over her head and instead you're pulling back. That's really great, Penelope. Go ahead, Olivia. Yes. 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 Ready? Go ahead, Olivia. So a common reason that puppies will chew yes. on yes, you girl. and people around them is because they're teething and they will be teething through yes, likely their ninth month. Yes, good girl, baby. So yes. bite inhibition yes, is something girl. that puppies learn very early when they are playing with each other. So their mother will get annoyed with them or their siblings will get annoyed by them biting too hard and indicate that that was too much. And this is the boundaries and structure piece that we talk about sometimes. Okay. When you see Grace or one of my older dogs help the puppies to recognize that was too much, back off, bite inhibition. You can also do bite inhibition if a puppy starts to bite you by making a noise like this. Ouch! Can you practice that? Ouch! Yeah! So if a puppy bites you too hard, I want you to say, ouch! Okay. Like, like that, because that's what a puppy would do. That's what a mama dog would do with a puppy. So in just a few moments, I'm going to go get the puppies and bring them up, and we're going to continue doing this showing what to do. Penelope, you're helping other families to prepare for having a puppy and teaching the puppy how to play well with young children. Good job. Penelope, when you arrive at my front door, are there usually dogs no. greeting you? No, not usually dogs greeting you at, your at my front door. What happens when you come in my front door, you usually do two things first. I usually, I usually take my shoes and coat off and I wash my hands. Exactly. Good job, Penelope. And so by taking your shoes off, we make sure we're protecting the puppies and we also have you wash your hands. And you've been doing that now every time you come. And with little puppies, it's very important that we, as the, the pack leader for our animals, set them up for success. So that's part of what we're doing. Now, Penelope's been playing fetch, or get that toy, with these two, and they have had a fantastic time. And I just went and got the puppies. So now I'm going to add the puppies into the mix here. I've had the puppies sitting in my lap while I've been talking in this segment. So there we go. The puppies are now added in. And I'm wanting you and Penelope to see the growth in the way that the puppies are using their mouths. So they're still going to want to chew. They're still going to want to gnaw. But when you look back at them over the last couple of weeks, you will see that there has been some development, meaning the first thing that they're doing isn't walking up to bite her hands, although they may want to gnaw on her hands at some point here. Yeah. Oh, yes, you. They're appreciating the toy now and playing with the toy because we've been working on teaching them to play with the toy rather than bite the person. Go ahead. Now, when we want the puppies to come back, we can say, puppy, 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 and they've learned to come to that. So there are certain things that you do every day, like picking your puppy up. Whenever you pick your puppy up, say the word up. Like right now you would say up. up. Yep. And I want you to put your hand underneath the front two legs there you go, that's right. So hand underneath the front two legs and then hand underneath the bottom. That's how we pick a puppy up. Really good job, Penelope. So there's certain things that we do every day, like picking our puppy up. Whenever you pick your puppy up, say up. So you can put your hand underneath her bottom and underneath her front two legs and pick her up if you want to, but you don't have to. You can also push her down. And you can get one of those toys right over there. You can get that little yeah, one of those toys, and you're gonna ice skate. When we have puppies this age, we have to ice skate so that we don't step on them. 
excellent. So these are all the kinds of things that we want to do as a responsible pack leader to help get our guests, our grandchildren, our children prepared to interact with a puppy. Penelope, what do you notice about how different the puppies are this week from perhaps one of the prior couple of weeks that you've been here with them? They... You're not sure? Maybe, are they, do they seem a little bigger perhaps? They've grown yeah. a little bit. They've grown yeah. a little bit, yeah. They're still as playful as they were, aren't they? Yeah. Do they have a birthday or something? They turned 10 weeks old. So they didn't have a birthday like you think of, like a birthday yeah. celebration, like they're not a year old. Yeah. But they turned 10 weeks old and they're maturing in some new ways. And so it's just interesting to notice. I can go back, for example, in the playlist. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel that's called Penny and Her Puppies. And you can watch from the time they were born all the way through. And so you can see their development and how much they've learned. I find yeah. that really interesting. Yeah. And see how they're playing with each other very nicely? They're having fun with each other. Birdie is trying to find a place to potentially hide her toy. It's so cute watching them play together. In this eight, nine, 10 week old stage, reinforcing for puppies what their toys are. Get your toy. Yes, get your toy. Yes, here's another one. Yes, this is your toy. Yes. These little toys, they love them. Fantastic little toys for puppies this age. And so it's teaching the puppy, this is yours, you can chew on this. This is your toy, you get to play with it. Make sure you're doing this yourself with your dogs. This happens to be a little Kong toy, which is fantastic for my size dogs. But if you have a dog that is a very large dog, this toy would be too small. And you'd perhaps wanna go with one of the larger Kongs this size. Teaching your dog to play with the right kind of toys is very important at this stage. So affirm, use the, use the language, get your toy. Yes, yes, chew your toy, yes. So this is, yes, good job, good job, you got your toy, yes, yes. So I give it back to him and I encourage him, yes, this is your toy, yes, yes. Good job, yes. If your puppy has begun to chew on something that you do not want the puppy to chew on, I recommend this product, Bitter Apple. You can find this product as well as all the other products that I reference or that you see me using. You can see these in the show more selection section below this video. So look below the video there. Do you see show more? You'll see my favorite products. You'll also see opportunities to comment. We love your comments on our videos. Hit that thumbs up as well to indicate that you like the video. All of those things help our channel. Penelope, it looks like you're having fun playing with these puppies. Yeah. Yes. I think you like working here, don't you? Yeah. I admire Penelope's work ethic so much. As a young person, Penelope said to her mom, I want to work, I want to have a job. And so that set up this opportunity for Penelope to come and help me with my puppies. And your work ethic is really good. So Penelope, I want you to put your hand underneath the front two legs. There you go. 
That's how we'll do the pickup. Yes, so now turn back towards me a little bit and we'll show. Yes, so you have your hand underneath the front two legs and you have your, your hand under the bum. So that's the way we pick up and carry a puppy. And when we pick the puppy up, we say up, up. And then eventually you can get to the point where you can say, Liberty, up. And she will come right over and jump up for me to pick her up. But if I get my dogs in the habit of saying up and then picking them up, what happens is they tighten their muscles appropriately so that they won't have a back problem later on. So that's a good thing to know, isn't it? Yeah. Dogs can learn lots of different words. They can learn something like 160 to 180 different phrases or words. And so it's important that we think it out as a family so that you and I are using the same phrases, we're using the same words so we're not confusing our dogs. What do you think of that? Yeah. Notice Toffee is quite content to chew on this toy that he understands is his toy. Good job, yes Toffee. What if you have an older dog, like what, if, and they never learn these things that Sean teaches you in the videos? What happens of that? Could you still teach them? Oh, what a great question, Penelope. Yes, you can teach dogs that are older. I know you have a dog that's a little bit older and didn't learn some of these things when it was a puppy. You got your dog from um, a different place and your, breed, your breeder didn't teach you these kinds of things. So yes, you can teach a dog that's a little bit older. There, see, just like you're learning. So you're learning, you just learned something about picking up a dog. And you can, you have to go back to the basics. And this is why I started a playlist that's focused on teaching puppy from eight weeks to 16 weeks, because that's when puppies learn best. And if you can catch it, during that window of time, if you can start with a puppy at eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks in there, they learn faster. But it doesn't mean that they can't unlearn some bad habits if, if they've gotten into bad habits. Yeah. Hey, would you like to do something that's very important with puppies now? Yeah. Yes, this is combing a puppy. And when we comb a puppy, we start, we get the comb right against their skin really gentle and we comb like that. Why don't you try it? It's important to have every member of your family combing, grooming, interacting with your puppies. So Penelope, I'm going to have you, let's grab him up. So when I pick a dog up, I say up, and I'm gonna have you sit down. Sit down, there you go. And now I'll hold him just a little bit, and you can practice combing him. And so we work together here and help him experience being combed, and I'll let him chew on a toy. My dogs, these puppies, have learned not to chew on my fingers in a hard way. They don't clamp down on my fingers at all but I want my dogs to be very comfortable with my hands because they are lure trained. And so they'll follow a lure, they'll follow my hand. And typically when we're combing little dogs like this, we're combing the, the skirt. So you're gonna turn it this way and go like that. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So I'm getting the comb right against the skin and I'm combing the skirt. I wanna do this so that the puppy doesn't get mats, doesn't get tangles in the puppy's hair. Because if the puppy does get tangles, it's painful for them to get it out. So it's so much easier to do it like this. So Penelope, you have hair, right? Yeah. And you comb your hair every day, don't yeah. you? Yes. And these dogs also have hair, which is part of what makes them hypoallergenic. So that people who have allergies don't have trouble with this type of schnauzer puppy. Schnauzers are hypoallergenic. They have hair, not fur. And so they really make wonderful pets in a home environment because they don't shed. 
and people who have allergy problems have no problems with schnauzers typically. I just opened the door right here near me and let Reddy go outside. Reddy was indicating to me that he wanted to go potty and I was reading his cues that that, that, that was what he wanted, which caused Penelope to ask me, why don't you let the little doggies go outside? So these little puppies are 10 weeks old, Penelope, and 10 week old puppies are usually too young to be going outside. At least, mm, that's my belief about it. Some people do let little 10 week old puppies go outside. They pick them up and they carry them out to a spot in the grass and they let the, pot, the puppy go potty there. And when the puppy is going potty, they need to say, go potty, go potty. I have to be careful about saying that because my older dogs that are here in the room with me, like Liberty and Reddy will be saying, huh, okay, you want me to go? <laughs> because they're trained to go potty when I say to go potty. Isn't that great? Yeah. But little puppies are too young and so they're potty pad trained. But the other piece of what you asked about is that these puppies don't have very great depth perception yet, which is why, have you ever heard me say, if you pick a puppy up and you put it in your lap, you have to make sure you hold on to the puppy? Because if you don't hold on to the puppy, it might jump off of the chair. It doesn't understand depth perception in the same way that you and I do. So depth, like this is, this is depth. The looking down this way, like that, this would be too big of a jump for a little puppy to make. Their legs and their joints aren't formed. They're not, for, they're not formed enough to like, it, that's a really, that's like a 100 mile cliff down that chair for a little puppy like this. Yes, you're getting it, you're getting it. So if we pick the puppy up, we have to make sure that we are also putting the puppy down and we don't let the puppy jump down. So a puppy only gets to jump down from something that it was able to jump up onto. Yeah, so if you had like, let's say you had one of these little puppies, you had them on that chair, you like you got to hold on tight to them, you probably couldn't have your phone because you need to hold on tight to them or else Toffee could just go flying out of your arms. You're getting it, Penelope. You are so smart. Yes, that's right. While we were just talking, Penelope, our little girl, Birdie, she's so smart. She came right over here and she went potty on the potty pad. So she knows where to do her business, which <laughs> is excellent. And it sets her up to be able to be taught to go outside when she's a little older. So I know that she knows to walk over here and go to the potty pad. And if we were training her to go outside now, what we would do is we would pay really close attention to when she walked over to go on the potty pad. Yeah. And then what we would do is we'd take her right outside. And there will be a point a couple of weeks from now, several weeks from now, when I show what that looks like. But for now, these little puppies need to go on potty pads. My dogs love to be relaxed and quiet. They're very easygoing. I also have handy in the places where my puppies play something that I know I just might need every now and then. So right here, I have my trusty water bottle. I haven't needed to bring it out. No one has indicated here that they're going to get uh, barky or whiny or anything like that. But I just wanted to show you that I also have a water bottle handy, close at hand, so that when and if I need it, uh, if a dog gets whiny, barky, something that's inappropriate behavior, I can use my water bottle to let them know that that is not wanted. As soon as they stop the unwanted behavior, I say yes, and I mark it with whatever it is that I want them to do. So what I love about this is it's a lot like life. Let's focus on what we do want instead of what we don't want in life and with our puppies. 
Help them to know what you do want them to do as opposed to focusing on what you don't want them to do. So these two are playing with each other pretty intensely, but it doesn't mean that either one of them is an aggressive dog. It's just normal puppy play. Normal puppy play. I will use my tone of voice regularly in different ways to indicate to my dogs. So, puppy, 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 yes. Puppy, puppy, puppy. This would be an example of me using puppy, puppy, puppy to get them to come towards me. But notice I'm not using the word come yet. We have not taught them that command yet. So instead they know puppy, puppy, puppy. If you need to get your puppy to come towards you, speak like you're speaking to a little child. Use a very soft, gentle voice. Puppy, puppy, puppies. Yes, yes, puppies. Yes, puppies. Yes, good job. Yes. So use a playful, soft voice like you're speaking to a child. One time, one of my neighbors in another house, they had a dog that had not been well trained and the dog got out of the front door, bolted out the front door and they were chasing the dog around the neighborhood. They were literally chasing after the dog and they had been chasing the dog for quite some time when I came upon what was happening. And Penelope, you might be interested to know, I laid on the ground and I started talking like I was a baby. I'm a little baby. I'm such a little baby. And what happens when you talk like you're a little baby to a dog? It comes right up to you. The dog came right up to me and started playing with me. And they said, how did you know to do that? And I said, oh, I've been working with dogs for many, many, many years. But the idea is talk to it like it's a baby and it'll come towards you. But don't overuse that. In other words, constantly, every single day for like 20 minutes, say puppy, puppy, puppy. That's too long or else they're not, they might not come to that if you, if you do it constantly every time, like you can't do it for an hour or something. You know, I could not have said that better myself, Penelope. You said that so well. So you want to use that intentionally. You don't want to just speak in a high-pitched baby voice to them all the time. And you also don't want to speak to your puppy all the time. Make sure your puppy has some quiet time, some sleep time, some play time alone every day also. This is an example of Grace having some alone quiet time. All of my dogs get an opportunity to have a little bit of alone quiet time every day. Please make sure you're doing that with your puppy too. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already and you're enjoying our videos, I ask that you just hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. The thumbs up says, I like these videos and it helps my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for doing so. Appreciate you being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.